Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have an 8 a.m. start, so it looks like it's 8 a.m. Good morning again. My name is Anthony Tossi, Wales Derby, um, the Long Island side of Wales Derby. We have Mr. Rob Clemens. He's on the New Jersey side. He'll be the co-pilot. We have a presentation today on Fujitsu. Uh, it's kind of titled the 2021 Sales Tools and New Products Review. Fujitsu is forever changing and offering uh, new products for our market. And uh, this past year, even during COVID, has been no different. So we're going to go through a bunch of um, what I would like to say baseline approach to in sales. If you're a sales for a wholesaler and sales for a contractor, um, wherever you kind of see yourself in the food chain of uh, Fujitsu, there is a baseline of what we need to understand how to select and uh, kind of plop and drop on a, on, a, on a sketch for that. If I'm not installing it, you know, there was a conversation, let's say with a homeowner, or if there's a conversation coming back from a contractor to a wholesale sales or myself or Rob or people at uh, Wales Darby, you know, we kind of need to know certain things about maybe how the system was laid out. And it's kind of important to see that and uh, there's information all around us, and one of them is the catalog. Um, the catalog is a great resource. It's limited, though. Um, we will have to go a little deeper and use something on the on the portal, which is on Fujitsu's website. So Fujitsu has an amazing website full of um, apps that we can tap into. Uh, I believe this is the way we should start looking at in the sales side of documenting, um, making notes in this one platform called the Infinite Comfort Pro app. It's a digital catalog with more information that really looking at it in depth lately is, is crosses over from the sales position into an installer and even into a technician. With a login, you know, if you can just bear with me a minute, imagine not everybody has its own app with their own login. As a company approach, I'm a contractor, small, big, whatever. I have this app and I give everybody a universal login. The ability to have the salespeople be on a job site and discuss and options and now start putting uh, the pen to paper, so to speak, but literally in the app, designing a system where it's checking you because of line set distances or combinations. It's, it's confirming whether you're right or wrong. Um, there is abilities with the information I can show you. If I go beyond a certain point with the line set, there's something called pre-charge. Every outdoor unit comes with X amount of refrigerant. That pre-charge gives you X amount of feet. But I'm allowing you to go to what we call the maximum line set distance. So we have to know the differences, all right? Take the larger number, subtract the smaller number, and then we have this, this other number, the difference. Now we take that and we have the ability now to know what we need to weigh in additional refrigerant. You can make notes in the app. And as you're building and doing, and you can actually save it as a PDF. You can say, email me. So that's one way of saving the information that later might become a quote request to a wholesaler. If someone inside the office, now the sales is done, he's left, he forward this information, inside sales, office personnel, let's say, they reach out, they have access to the PDF, they can forward it to a wholesaler. They now can get a quoted price, goes back to the homeowner, salespeople again, Mr. And Mrs. Johnson, whatever, here is your, your quote. And I hope to hear from you soon or whatever we need to do. So now we get the job. The installer now gets hold of the same. Let's we can tag it. We can label every job site. We can put a ticket number, a job site, an address, whatever it may be. So it's always going to be a document live throughout the existence of you and that system. It's kind of kind of cool. Now the installer sees all the notes. Oh, I got to weigh in X amount of refrigerant. You know, if there's something that goes wrong and later a technician has to show up, he has to maybe refill the system. He now knows, hey, it's not just back to pre-charge. So there is this kind of cradle to grave approach 
to this one platform called the Infinite Comfort Pro app. And um, I think it's a huge resource that we, we have to tap into, especially for information. So I'm gonna just get a little further into the presentation. That app will come a little bit later. So it's a teaser. It's kind of putting the carrot out there for maybe you guys to hold on to the end, all right? So myself, Anthony Tossi, and uh, Rob Clemens working for Wales Darby. We're the rep, uh, rep um, like I said, two sides of the river, third generation. We've had you know, a lot of people come through our facilities in respect to trainings. And uh, this last year has been uh, off limits to our buildings for the most part. And now uh, this new platform of webinars and what we're trying to do to still get in front of you guys and deliver great information, help the cause, right? This is the look of Fujitsu, what we call Halcyon. This is their residential platform. Down at the bottom, we have our AOUs, our outdoor units, and they vary in size and, and capacities, uh, singles into multiples. And then the upper right qu quadrant is all of our uh, styles of indoor units, from something wall-mounted, high or low. Uh, we have a universal. We have a ceiling mount only. We have the brand new multi-position air handler. And then we also have some compact cassettes and ducted, our ARUs. We have uh, low, medium, static, what I call mini air handlers, the ones pretty much right there in the middle. This is a brand new catalog. It's a 2021 release. It's a digital format at this current moment. I did give you guys a QR code. So if you choose, if you have your uh, phone or I don't know if you're on a tablet or a, or a laptop or something, you can use your phone. You can put that up to uh, your phone up to the screen, take a picture, and you now have a PDF of the brand new 2021 digital catalog. I'm not opposed to having the catalog. It is something that's really geared towards homeowners. It's a show and tell item. It's a, it, is, has, it does have resources, but it's kind of limited. It doesn't give you true data. It gives you a very small snapshot of performance. It doesn't um, you know, give you some of the other nuances that we need to know when installing for maybe some accessories or what are my true options. You know, it takes a little practice to, to learn the ways of Fujitsu, even on paper, uh, what to look for, where to look for. So. Um, great resource. I put the cover up there always because as they make a new catalog, they change the cover. Um, if you have an old one, not to say throw it away, but my, my little uh, thing over years was black magic marker, draw a line and just write old and then stick it in the file. But um, there's a lot of documentation that we don't need to keep paper as much as we think we do because it's, um, it's up in the cloud, let's say. It's on their websites. We have something called the portal, and I'm hoping that everyone on this presentation is aware of the portal. It's not for homeowners. It is a login. You have to have a pa uh, password and a username. But uh, it's what Fujitsu wants everybody from the sales for PDF, sales for documentation, uh, marketing, and so forth, uh, trainings even. But then it goes into far more of all the uh, installation guides, all the manuals, the service manuals. That is going to be found on the portal, and that is a, a huge resource. I mean, I, I can't imagine with all the manufacturers that myself and others, you know, we, we represent and talk about every day. I, I, I'm just challenged to remember everything. And today, with all the resources, it's just a matter of where to find the information. So I know what I'm looking for. I just need to know where to find it, and that's half the battle. And that doesn't, that's no different with Fujitsu. All right, so there's a new catalog. If you're familiar with the catalog, they do a pretty nice job with color coding sections. And, um, and they actually take that color coding even into the equipment. So if you're an installer or a technician, you know what I mean about all the thermistors. They're, they're color coded as well. Um, things are labeled nicely. They do a nice job with the catalog. Over the years, I thought there could be some improvements. I've seen uh, little um, changes um, pertaining to line sets. As, there is so much that even as a salesperson, you should be aware of the placement of the outdoor unit versus where the indoor units are. Unit units, two, you know, two or more, um, because that's really the setup. If an if installer is following your instructions and we're giving them bad information, I really 
can't trust that the unit's going to function or produce the comfort that it's designed to do. All right. So there's a little bit of emphasis on line sets. Um, I, I, I jokingly say anything that's labeled for Jitsu has already been engineered. It's what we do now to connect the outdoor to indoor. It's the line set itself. It's understanding the proper charge and refrigerant so that year after year, there's going to be this, uh, you know, reliability and then uh, um, dependability with, with performance too. It's going to do what it's designed to do. So that's a very big, uh, big, okay, my mindset, I need to change and understand model to model, right? Every model can be different. It's not a cookie cutter approach. With Fujitsu, if you're asking questions or we're getting involved in a conversation or if I'm knowing the, the situation, what's the application, I need to know what model are we talking about because it can be very different from one model to another model. Even if it's a number, let's say the number nine, that doesn't necessarily mean a BTU capacity. All right, we have to stop under, uh, stop relying and say, oh, it's a 12, it's 12,000 or it's a 24, 24,000. It could be something far more. Okay, and that's something I hope to show you uh, going forward. But in the catalog, as you thumb through, it's a it's a pretty you know girthy piece of document, right? Seventy some odd pages, and we can get very frustrated because I can't find, and all I'm doing is flipping one way, flipping the other way. But if I tell you, if you're looking for any system that is a single approach, one outdoor unit, one indoor unit, it's going to be in the blue section. And they put a nice colored tab. I believe it's at the top of the page. So if you're thumbing through and you're in the green section, well, then you're in the multiple, you know, more than one, two or more section of the catalog. So it kind of just helps you get a little centered. You, you look professional in front of a customer. You start thumbing through. This is the model. Why I'm picking this could be features. It could be distance. Uh, maybe the line set has to be longer. It could be uh, we're chasing a rebate and I'm looking at efficiencies. I'm looking at SEER or HSPFs or COPs. These are acronyms that utilities or EERs, you know. So these acronyms are useful for whatever your position in the sales role is in front of an end user, uh, contractor, you know, just having that, that um, educated uh, conversation with the uh, with a contractor really can put you in a different um, a different light in their business. So the other section I always like to talk about is the orange section and that's called the accessories. And in there, this is when we can take what comes standard with some of our equipment, a remote control, let's say, and I can actually, and, and check some balance here. I'm going, okay, I got this model. What other options do I have with this unit? If it comes with a wireless remote, Am I able to put a hardwire controller? And that's what some of the information on the individual model pages in the catalog will help you determine. And then if you go to the back of the page, then you'll actually find, folks oh, said this model remote goes with that unit. So you find that model remote in the back section, the orange section, and then it'll actually list um, perhaps another additional accessory that has to go with it to make it function. So it's not necessarily just one, one additional SKU item or model number. It might be perhaps up to three. Uh, I, I need this remote, I need an interface kit, or I need a wire kit sometimes, you know? So it's just those stumbling blocks of understanding how to work within the Fujitsu uh, format, all right? This is something new, um, multi-position air handler. It's a, it really is a, a huge jump into New York, uh, New York, the, uh, the uh, North American market with what we do with duct work up in people's attics or just in general in buildings. So we have four different sizes here, a two, two and a half, three and a four ton. Um, everything about this is Fujitsu. It is an inverter DC driven uh, horizontal discharge, one power source. We have a, a partnership um, I guess, man, probably three, four years at this point. Uh, I don't know, three years, maybe with Ream. And uh, we had a unitary looking approach to our indoor uh, multi position air handler, the Fujitsu uh, version of an air handler. And uh, that was not this. They're, they're completely different setups in the way um, that Fujitsu goes in technology versus any North American um, piece of equipment. 
So we do take advantage of that new offering. This is one of those things where Fujitsu is listening and learning and building and now offering this, what we call multi-position air handling. It's up to about one inch, one inch of static, not up to, it is one inch of static for ducting. So that really is gonna cover a lot of ground in some of these larger homes that I've seen people fail because they took like our low static or ARU or mini duct uh, uh, air handler and they don't understand what the blower's capabilities are. They look at tonnage and they took this one out and they put that one in, let's say a two ton, and they don't realize the static pressure is quite low and then they're not delivering comfort. So they kind of, you know, shot themselves in the foot. It was a, it was a hard learn. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, I've helped people come up with solutions. It's basically adding another system. So, um, but we have the two, two and a ton, uh, two, two and a half ton RGLX is an outdoor unit there. That RGLX is a new format. It's going to start appearing more and more into some other uh, changes with some traditional pieces we've had, like large cassettes or even um, a mid-static, not a low-static ARU. So it's a, it's a bigger format of um, our low-static. So we went from low to medium, and we offered the Reem Rude kind of um, uh, co collaboration. And then now we just uh, we have our own here, this multi-position air handler. And we'll talk about the multi-position. And the one to the right, obviously, the three-ton, four-ton, the LMASIs, a one, rather. So. Um, just know they're really starting to change some of these acronyms and some of the model numbers. So forever, the this is the way Fujitsu will go to market. They're constantly changing and offering new. So the multi-position, it's uh, four positions with some in-field rotation requirements for the blower. So we do have an upflow, uh, a left and a right discharge, and, and a downflow. So really, really nice in, in respect to replacements, um, tight quarters, you know, sometimes people want to stick them in closets or uh, just the uh, knee walls or, you know, a, a, some kind of a, a weird pitched uh, roof line. So it allows us to be quite uh, flexible in a lot of different um, uh, scenarios. Uh, minus five cooling. That's This is pretty impressive now. So the Fujitsu inverter DC components with all things we know and love about traditional heat pumps with Fujitsu's name on it. This is no different. We have a minus five cooling. And then this is also a minus five heating and with really good performance. So big, big um, opportunities to go into some homes, uh, retiring out, swapping out, maybe just AC approach. Uh, you know, the ducting is still uh, in good shape. I can do a, a quick replacement. I, I would always suggest do a line set swap. You have your outdoor unit and then you have your indoor. Um, with those capacities. It is an all aluminum build. Uh, I'm talking about the coil and the fins. We do have an optional uh, electric heater kit. Um, I, I, I can't remember if it's like 12 kW. I don't remember what the kW is maxed out, but there are some additional um, you know, heat uh, options if we choose to. Good sear, 19 there, and then it's a single fan outdoor. Single fan outdoor. Um, some of our competitors that offer have a double fan for, I believe, the larger capacities, uh, the four ton at least. And we have some really good length on the line set here. Max piping line set on the three and four ton upwards of 230 feet. Now, that might sound all impressive. And you look down and are, are out and next time you're on the street and go, well, how far is 230 feet? It doesn't mean we should always go that far, you know. With refrigerant, you have derating. The further you travel, you'll have derating. So you can't promise you're gonna deliver the BTUs that we're stating. So shorter is always better above minimum. Fujitsu has a minimum amount of line set that they're stating. It's in their specifications. It's in the installation structure manuals. It's probably in the catalog based on what model. So. So be aware when you're walking the job and you're, you know, I, I walk a job three ways. Um, I'm usually outside. All right, show me where, you know, where's electric. I'm kind of taking an inventory. We go inside, show me the inside. Okay, so now I'm just kind of drawing lines from here to how do we get outside? You know, what are the challenges? Not everything is on an exterior wall. So um, sometimes the length is more of the challenge than the load that's what i always say the the distance from here to there is more of a challenge than the load i can do it 
with a smaller PTU capacity, a nine or a 12, but the distance now I'm limited, you know, because we do have a max. Um, and typically with the smaller ones, uh, again, here I'm gonna cookie cut something. Typically, the word typically with the smaller ones, it's about 66 feet. So you can't go 80 feet, but that's where the customer wants the outdoor unit. And that's when things start to snowball and downward spiral and, and not in a good scenario. So we have to understand what model are we positioning ourselves to be selling? What are the capacities or the, the maximums or the minimums on the line sets? And then we need to assure, you know, hey, are you okay? This is where I'm, no, I didn't like it over there because I don't want to see it or whatever. They're worried about this, they're worried about that. And the truth be told is then, then it's a bad selection. And don't then install something because they wanted an additional feet above the max amount of line set. So, you know, it's, um, it's been done, it's been tried and it's failed 100%. So over time, you're gonna kill compressors, you're gonna short life the equipment, you're gonna have complaints and, uh, you know, just know going in, Fujitsu requires a minimum of the line sets, they provide a pre-charge, which is kind of cool, and they actually have a maximum length for their line sets. We measure one way, flare to flare. So when you're looking at, okay, well, how do I measure this? Is it there and back 66 feet? No, the flare connection outdoor unit to flare connection indoor unit, 66 feet is the max. Shorter is always better above minimum. So Ant, what is the minimum for this? nine model and it's um it's about nine nine feet ten feet is your number you need to have at least the 10 foot minimum flare to flare on most of our smaller again i'm saying this without cookie cutter most of our smaller offerings it can change model to model a lot of things change especially with line sets all right this was another offering brand new they've um revamped um what we had the rls3 s's of the world sy's yh's and then the rlf's so the lmas is a 912 offering it has a different platform for our wi-fi it has literally a plug and play it does not come equipped with the wi-fi you can add it though but it's simply adding this plug-in card now you're not dealing with interface kits wire kits and all this stuff and then additional modules what you buy, if you wanna add Wi-Fi to this LMAS um, platform, you plug it in. And then we have the next drop down and um, really good performance here. This was replaced in the RLS3 YYH, which I kind of always labeled as the Mac Daddy. It was the 33 plus SEER um, minus 15 offering on a single nine, 12 and 15s. So they've just now incorporated a new platform of controls They've increased some of the capacities off the blower, and we have really good performances. This is definitely a rebate chaser. Um, if you look at the LMAS, where it replaced the RLF1s or W1s, they were mid-tier. They, they're, they're probably the high percentile in the 90s of what we sell every day uh, in respect to standard wall mount Fujitsu 912s. They've now made these improvements, it's now called an LMAS. And if you look to the lower right, you know, I said improvements over efficiencies, old to new, RLFW1 versus the LMAS1. So the sears on the left in that pink or purple there, uh, they were once 23 sear with the RLF offering, and now they're upwards of almost 17, 26.5. Sear is for air conditioning, the higher the number, the better. The HSPF, heating seasonal performance factor, that is for your heat pump side. And again, we went from 11 to 13. This is an improvement where why, you know, the, the ability to provide heat, you know, um, this is a five degree heat pump out of the box. So if you look at the LMAS 912, 23.5 to 26 year, cooling is a 14 degrees. It will actually still provide cooling down to 14 degrees outdoor temperature and it will still, it's rated, right? It's a rating of five degrees for heating. Um, so this is just showing you how efficient these things are becoming. And even as what we know, heat pumps about 10, 15 years ago, they really weren't big performers. They didn't put a lot of BTUs out 
and they really were energy hogs. So um, this is that mindset change. It's been around us for a good, probably a good 12 years with Fujitsu's offering on heat pumps. They've really been pushing the envelope with more and more capacity on the heating side. It's uh, It really is an eye opener for me when I do mostly, you know, a hydronic approach to comfort for the other lines that are rep at Wales Derby. So um, the 12, just to kind of kill this one slide here, the, the uh, traditional, it gained a point. So it was a, a 12 RLF was a 22 and then the LMAS is our 23 and 11 to 12.5. So always know this, the smaller the unit, the less energy it takes to run. And that's why you see these large jumps in SEER or bigger jumps in HSPF because it takes so little to actually run the equipment so the efficiency goes higher. Basically, that's how it works. So for these, uh, the H, if you see the LZs now, that's a minus six heat pump, nine, 12, and 15. And then we add an H, take the S off, I call it standard. So LZ, AS, call it the standard, minus six, standard. Minus six heat pump. Um, 9, 12, and 15, and then add an H, LZ, AH. Anytime you see the letter H, it represents extra low temperature heating, and that is our minus 15, minus 15 heat pumps. Um, really, really uh, big performers, especially where we need to provide heat much further north. I mean, here on Long Island, um, I couldn't imagine, I would say five degree heat pump would be more than enough for my area. Uh, minus six, you're adding, you know, there's bells and whistles, that's features. Again, there's rebates. Uh, minus 15, unless we're going up against a spec or a competition, you're adding quite a few, you know, couple bucks there um, to a job just because of CYA factor. And I don't know if I was to show you the true data in, um, in the design and technical manuals now, not the catalog. The catalog is a very um, limited performance. You look at the numbers and go, wow, it's impressive. Sounds like it do, how does it do that? Um, just be aware when you're looking at the catalog, whether it be mined or any other manufacturer in the HVAC or in heat pumps, when you look at the heating performance that they show you, the BTUs, that's on a 47 degree day. We're talking about a minus six heat pump. The catalog doesn't actually show you the BTUs that the unit is capable of doing at a minus at a minus six day or even the minus 15 day. So there's a little bit of smoke and mirrors in the catalog that we're not all maybe aware of. So I don't want you to start quoting some amazing performances and thinking that it's at a minus six degree day or a minus 15 degree day. So AHRI, um, these guys over here in the blue bubble on the left, they are basically the line that we have to tow. And they say, okay, to make people all equal, show me a 47 degree day with a 70 degree indoor temperature. We'll test your equipment and then we'll see what the BTU output is. And that's what you need to post. That's what you need to print. And that's really not, uh, you know, it's not reality for where we live here, even on Long Island or further north or west Pennsylvania, elevations, things of that nature where it gets colder. Um, the catalog, again, will have a page specific to these models, and you'll see everything about the line sets there. And I just wanted to tip my hat and say it says right here, max piping length, 66 feet. Does that mean I can do 80 feet? That means no, you can't do anything more than 66 feet. Everything is engineered around the compressor. All right, the compressor ability to work efficiently and also recover oil at the furthest point of our line sets and systems. So new technology, that picture's kind of vague there, but that's it's kind of showing you if you open up the hood on these new LMs or LZs, that there's a, a, an opening, there's a, a, an insert port that you could put these cards into. That's your Wi-Fi add-on for the LM. LZs are already Wi-Fi enabled. They have the card built in. You cannot buy it without it, okay? So LZAS, LZAH is on board Wi-Fi. It's already in there. Whether you choose to hook it up or not, that's up to you. But uh, you know, again, looking at those Sears, uh, HSPFs and such, that's, this, is a, this is a rebate chaser right here. This unit right here, these are single 
system offerings. These units do not cross over into like a multiple outdoor scenario. So LMAS is, is a single nine, single 12, and then the LZAS AH are nine, 12, 15s. Again, single system approach, one indoor outdoor unit. ESPs, uh, the LZs, they do have the what we call the motion sensor. It's another way of just kind of doing a, a setback when no one's in the room. Why are we maintaining temperature? It's a function on the remote control. You turn it on or you turn it off. It is default. You cannot change the swing for the heating temperature uh, adjustment or the cooling. It is what it is. You choose to use it, you turn it on. You don't want to use it, you don't turn it on. Remote controls. And, um, and just let's look at down at the bottom there, the UT YTFSXF-1. Uh, that is what the new insert card looks like for the LMLZs. The little insert port, you plug that right in, and now uh, you have the Wi-Fi capabilities. New platforms or controllers, new looking controllers, shifting from three wire to two wire. Everything is kind of evolving fairly quickly. A lot of these controls are coming down from the VRF side or the air stage side of, of Fujitsu, which is the VRF. And uh, certain models today, especially with the RGLXs of the world, will not have controls. You'll soon see controls be a la carte. A la carte. You're going to have to order them at the time you're, you know, for your install. LG, um, so RGLXs, and and uh, I think it's the the EH, I'll show you that one. It's a new wall mount 30. Lead lag control was a new platform. Those are going to be, I believe, a la carte controls. If you're not aware, we do offer a 912 115 volt. As a salesperson, the first thing I want to know is what power can you provide me? Because that really sets up what unit can I start to uh, quote. Today, I don't want to have to wait for an electrician to come and upgrade a panel unless you are that electrician, unless you have someone on staff and you're, you're, you're getting him on the job. So, you know, and the budget allows. But, you know, the first thing I always want to do is check the panel. What do we have to work with down in the breaker, you know, down at the, uh, at the panel in the, in the basement, let's say, or whatever the breaker is in the garage. So, you know, if it doesn't allow for 208, 230 volt, well, then I might resort back to if a 9 and a 12 BTU capacity is what's needed for the space, you know, um, then I, I might just go, here you go, you know, looking at your system. This is what I can quote for you today. Um, you know, if things were to change, then I can have a much more wider offering. But for the most part, we do offer 115 volt 9 and a 12. That head, again, is, is unique. It's, it's, it's only for that outdoor unit, 115 volt. So it doesn't cross over like we see a lot of our indoor units. They cross from a single into a dual, tri, quad, all the way up to five. But um, it's, a budget, it's a budget item. It's a budgetary approach to giving people some solution with comfort, cooling, and heating. It is a heat pump and um, you know, 16 sear, 9 HSPF, cooling down to 15 and heating down to 15. So it is not the, uh, you know, the, the pinnacle of a Fujitsu. It's just... Uh, you know, maybe to say a lower end, but it gets it done with 115 volts, which is nice. We talk about factory pre-charge. With every outdoor unit, and this is great for salespeople, especially if you're working with installers. If you know a unit's pre-charge, right, the factory gives you X amount of refrigerant, and they call it a pre-charge. And here they show this one's 49 feet. Now, imagine if you laid out with your homeowner, knowing what the pre-charge was for that specific model you're trying to sell. And if you're at the pre-charge and above a minimum line set, your installers don't have to worry about refrigerant. They don't have to, um, you know, in, um, what the word I'm like, put in more. You know, they don't have to uh, raise the uh, refrigerant level because we've now gone further. I'm not saying not to go further because he says it says maximum 66 feet. But what if we took advantage of that pre-charge? How much more quicker would installs be? How much more jobs can you do in a week, perhaps? Because my guys don't have to do the refrigerant. If I set it up as a salesperson, 
as what I know about Fujitsu's and learning about line sets and what they're giving me, if I stay at the pre-charge and above minimum, there's more than enough refrigerant for this model right here, 49 feet. So one way, flare connection to flare connection, if I'm 49 feet and less, my guys do not have to worry about weighing in more refrigerant. I do have the ability to go further, but no more than the maximum, which you see is 66 feet. Then they will have to understand the difference between what the pre-charge is and then what the additional line set added, right? Let's say we went 59 feet. I'm less than 66, that's good. I'm above 49 the pre-charge. I added 10 more feet to the system. It just had to be. There was an obstruction, whatever it was. The distance was the distance. I I I I did nothing wrong. I just need to now tell my guys, hey, on this install, and I'll show you the app that will help you, you need to add an additional two ounces. And you have the ability to do that in one platform, the Infinite Comfort Pro app. Infinite Comfort Pro app, and I'll show you that. Right, these are single zones. Uh, this is the RLFW1. This is what the LMAS is. Uh, replaced or, or are going to be a replacement for. Um, so this was the 23 uh, SEER for the 9 and the 22 for the 12. Not bad performance. Again, mid-tier, good performance, you know, just workhorse. Not a bad looking indoor unit. And um, I don't know if this is going to be another five years in existence or if it's going to, you know, just fade to black because of what the new ones are. Um, what was nice about this, this head went over from the single system into offering to duels, tries, and quads. So we get bigger. Certainly we have larger than 15. So you saw the LZs. We have the 9, 12, 15,000 offer. Uh, actually, yeah, 9, 12, 15 model offer, not 1,000. So we have ASUs, American, I call it standard unit, wall mount, right? So the most standard unit we sell is SUs, uh, 18 RLF, R for reverse cycle e-pump, L is for inverter, F is for flexible, meaning that unit crosses over into other options, the duals, the tries, the quads, up to five. So we offer here an ASU uh, 18 and a 24, just bigger capacities. People, I want you to be aware, <clears throat> oversizing is definitely possible with Fujitsu's. You can oversize. I've seen it. I've seen short cycling. I've seen the, the byproducts of oversizing of lack of comfort. And um, just be aware the sizing aspect, we need to get a little bit better with knowing what heat load or heat gains are for the space so that we can properly select the right piece of equipment. Now, what I'm trying to emphasize here is you look at those numbers and you think it's uh, 18,000. And that's what they want you to kind of think, but it's not the case. There really is not a true statement that a 24 is 24,000 BTUs. It could be something far more, okay? So we need to get a little understanding, a better understanding of what the load, the space, and then properly select a good piece of equipment. D&T, Design and Technical Manual. Again, it's a portal approach. You have to log in, username, password, look up the specific model, and then now you have true data points of a, um, a unit, not just 47 degrees outdoor, maintaining 70 indoor as AHRI asks us to print, print in our catalogs, all right? So SEER, HSPF, EER, COP, again, chasing rebates, utilities, offering quite a bit of money. Um, these are those uh, make or break points here, the SEER, HSPF, and ERs, and COPs of the world, All right? These are good deliverers, 100% name uh, plate heating down to five degrees. Heating a heat pump that delivers 100% at five degrees outdoor temperature. So if you've not approached the heat side of Fujitsu and thinking something of the past, this is completely a different um, offering technology, just amazing what they're doing with inverter DC uh, compressors and uh, everything they do with our circuit boards and so forth. So it is rated down to minus five, right? So we do have a drop off 
where you know we were 100% down to the five degrees, and then we do rate it down to minus five. Heat pumps never stop. Just because it hits its rated point on the chart, it will continue to run and deliver anything it can. It just diminishes, you know, at that point. But we're talking at minus five. You know, it's um, it's unrealistic for where I live, at least. Uh, I'm not saying for Canada and those points or Minnesota or whatever, but um, the technology is here. Take advantage of it. This is the fairly new, I guess it's about two years, three years now, ASU 30RLE or the AOU to double stack. So be aware of the, the height now change of uh, AOU 30RLX, the letter X meaning extended line set. E is for engineering and H is for minus 15 heat pump. So min max cooling, again, 9,900 to 32,400. That's in cooling. Now, that cooling is on a 95 degree day. Again, HRI, the way they test it, one of their test things, I should say, is a 95 degree outdoor with an 85 degree set point or 80 degree set point indoor temperature. Again, what you see in the catalog isn't reality. Looking at the min max heating, it says this 30 produces 37,500 BTUs. True statement on a 47 degree day, maintaining 70 degree indoor. Oh, and by the way, if you really look at it, when they test this piece of equipment in the laboratory, the outdoor unit and the indoor units connection points are level. There is no height differential up or down. And also they're only testing with 24 feet, seven inches of line set. So with that being said, what job do you do where the outdoor unit and the indoor unit are equal in height connection points? and only less than 25 feet apart. And designing for a 47 degree day, maintaining 70 inside. So the catalog leads us to believe something far greater than truly what, you know, is reality. Because remember I was saying, I can talk about the distance here and how long we can run that line set, but you have derating upwards of maybe 10%. And now you're guaranteeing and delivering uh, BTUs and you're, you're making all these statements and forever and ever the complaint is the room is not satisfied and it's not comfortable, not comfortable. And why? Well, we ran it a country mile and then they also have elevation, right? So it's not just level. I can go upwards. Some of these go up as uh, much as 98 feet difference in elevation, right? Or down even, uh, the, the units on the roof going down into the building. So all these things are factors that I want to kind of kind of plant the seed maybe today with you as a salesperson and just realize don't always read or believe what we're reading here right there is a fine print of fujitsu and it really starts making you shift out of the catalog and onto the website the portal all right cooling capacities this is engineered for um for uh server rooms so we have a really great performer in cooling minus five but I said it was a letter H, and letter H represents a minus 15 heater, heat pump. So imagine that. I have a remote control, and I can still, you know, maybe somehow this unit can get into a heat mode. We do have lockout features on our remote control. So minus 5 cooling, minus 15 heating, really high performance in BTUs, right? Let's see where this goes. Finer brochure, design, technical manual. It has a little bells and whistles. Does it have motion sensors? I'm not really sure if I need to have a shift in a server room. A server room needs critical cooling. It needs to maintain a certain temperature. Why are we now offering this heating approach? Well, I also have large gathering areas. Let's say, you know, um, restaurants, catering halls, funeral parlors, whatever that in the dead of winter when you have a lot of people you know, in suits or dresses, they're not necessarily needing heat in the building. They need cooling. So we need to be sure with that unit on a roof on a 12 degree day or a night or whatever, what is the output that we are still promising? Because, you know, being a larger BT capacity, I can use less equipment to now carry the same load as opposed to more smaller ones and taking up more rooftop or just adding more to the budget. So this is those plotting points as to what the challenges are, what are some of the distances, 
what is the primary? Is it primary heating? Is it primary cooling? So we have a bunch of questions in, in my mind. I start checking boxes as I'm not to say interviewing, but as I'm having that conversation with somebody, I'm already kind of driving where I'm thinking we should go, probably a little too premature than where the, the conversation is not ended yet, you know. But what we did here for server rooms, sometimes it's specified, right? Engineer says we need to have 100% lead lag. I want 100% redundancy. I want to be able to have two units, they communicate together. If one unit isn't keeping up, maybe the servers are getting older, they're starting to overheat, the BTUs are, you know, the heating is, is rising in the temperature in the room. I have a second unit that kind of will now uh, kick in and it will do what it can to maintain that temperature in the room again. We have two units, 100% redundancy, and one now needs to be maintained, right? It's a mechanical device. So I still have now the other unit there as a backup. Um, really cool things in, in application-wise we can do with this one unit. Uh, it's a little bigger of a unit, so it just it's a, it's a special approach. Large large gatherings, uh, critical cooling, server room approaches, things of that nature. Um, special features here provides cooling only, right? I said that with our remote control we have something called a function setting. I literally can make any of my R's reverse cycle heat pumps a cooling only piece of equipment. I can actually make it a heating only piece of equipment with the remote control. It's not for the homeowners, it's for the installer technician. It's called function settings. It's been around Fujitsu's remotes forever and ever and ever. So um, we do have some lockouts, changing of defaults from the factory. So here again, letter H minus 15. This is the newer controller. Um, the wired remote does not work with the lead lag twin installation. So just be aware, um, we might need to approach that application and what do we need to do now to control it. So uh, this is the new offering, the backlit touch screen, really nice looking controller. Uh, it was a three wire, then it becomes a two wire in the new platform of the RG Alexas of the world. So this does kind of show you the room display in regards to temperature in the room. So do we call it a thermostat nah, not so much we still set a set point you know my set point of temperature is a number in my mind but what if i'm not comfortable well that's still my number how come i'm not comfortable is there something wrong with the machine maybe not maybe you know we've changed you know maybe you know covid friendly eating and all this comfort food and all of a sudden i got bigger body mass and now i'm more of a, a 70 not a 72 guy for cooling so who knows so it's just this mindset forever and ever in north america of having a number telling us our comfort so please be aware when we use like a wireless remote control it's not a thermostat we're just setting a set point at the indoor unit to maintain a certain temperature it might need to change all right, this is a look of the universal, the ABUs on the left, B for both ceiling and floor. And then the one to the right uh, is our 36 ceiling mount. These are some older offerings. They've been around before I was even Fujitsu. They're more um, industrial or you know commercial looking and uh, not necessarily aesthetics for a residential. Again, they start large on the U ABU, which is 18,000, 24,000, and then the 36. These are big honkers of a unit. So definitely more, um, uh, you know, commercial approach, but big, big performers, really good stuff here. Something about the wire, wireless and wired controllers. Again, these still continue to come out of the box in certain models. It's only the newer stuff that we'll see. We'll need to make sure we order the controllers based on what the requirements are for the space. Um, again, the one on the left is just a wireless controller. It's, it's our interaction with the indoor unit, setting a set point, whether it be cooling or heating. And then the one to the right is a hardwire controller. It comes standard on a um, ARU, our ducted unit, and also a compact cassette. And if you choose not to have that controller, are there options to do something different? Yeah, there are, for both actually. If I don't wanna have a wireless, because it's in a, a bed and breakfast or a hotel room or whatever the scenario is, and they're fearful that these remotes are just gonna walk, we do have options to upsell, know what our challenges are, what other accessories do I need, and I can do a hardwire controller um, 
on those units that come standard with wireless. This is a new offering, probably five years now. And uh, this is the AGU. They come 9, 12, and 15. This was, again, something lower on the wall, more homeowner aesthetics, nice looking piece of equipment. And, um, and we have the ability now to take the aesthetics from up high where people are offensive to something down low. As you see, they're showing you some old world technology with the radiators there. And um, we now can take some older homes and really bring them into, you know, 2021 with Fujitsu and heat pumps. Not just giving them a big boiler. They want to maybe maximize their living space. Uh, people go in and they to do a total reno. And then now we have the option to offer a Fujitsu that would be perhaps a primary heat source as well as all summer long cooling. Uh, we do have this as a standard as a minus five. And if I hit the button here, we do offer it. The outdoor unit becomes an H model, and that becomes a minus 15 heat pump. All right. When you see the letter H, again, minus 15, the only thing that changes the outdoor unit. Everything about that outdoor unit is geared and engineered for that minus 15 low, low temperature night, you know, that cold, that cold, cold winter night with wind and everything else blowing around. Um, let's move back up here. Okay, here we go. So uh, what I call our mini air handler, our ARUs, 9, 12, and 18 here, these were ducted. Um, we have some nice features over some of our competitors. It is a low static. Some of the models don't have as high as the 0.36 inches of water gauge column or water column. So um, we have to be aware of what we're installing these things and connecting to. For the most part, these were utilized as a point of use. One unit, one room. Very little ductwork because of static. Static is resistance. The blower creates um, you know, the air to move down a pipe. Anything that air touch is resistance, whether it be the return, although it's a negative static, it's still static, and then obviously the positive off the front of the blower. These things are engineered to only overcome X. We have to be uh, paying attention to what we're connecting ductwork wise and making the proper selection. Um, I, I joke and I jokingly say this and I try to help the gentleman out. He installed, let's say it was a two ton, I'm sorry, the 18,000 here in a home with like eight drops. He thought he was doing a typical North American air handler and there was no comfort. There was no airflow. There was nothing. And, you know, basically just getting lay of the land, a couple quick questions. What do you got going on? Like, oh, okay. Well, you know, this, that, and the other thing I'm trying to give him, you know, some, you know, some slap of a hand corrections, but, um, there was no way this unit was going to work in that system. And, uh, I said at best, maybe cut off the master suite, the bathroom, the bedrooms, how many drops in there out of the eight did you put in? Well, I think there's three there. I said, well, I don't know if it's going to work, but basically, you're going to have to add another outdoor unit. You're going to have to disconnect the ductwork from whatever those three or four drops are, isolate the other unit, and hopefully we get better performance on that side, the upstairs, and then install another ARU, you know, and maybe do a heat loss and maybe come up with a, a nine, perhaps, for that just the, the master suite. And um, I don't think he really liked what I was telling him, but that was an honest opinion of mine because it was a, it was a misfire. It was a misapplication for that um, my, you know, mini air handle, the low static. You cannot think you're gonna overcome resistance of flex duct. You know, flex duct is nothing more than static builder. So smooth, rigid pipe duct work, okay? Always, always better for airflow, regardless. Things seem more convenient, more budget friendly, but they really start to hinder performance. And now when the complaint comes in, People want to point to the equipment, and it's not the equipment, okay? It's in a selection of the equipment. Yeah, I agree. The equipment's not getting it done, but it's not because it's miss, um, you know, it's not, it's, it's a lack of performance. It's, it is performing. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, the upper right corner is an auto louver. So, you know, sometimes with duct work, and we have these open grills and, again, aesthetics, um, or more control, we have the ability now with this add-on auto louver to actually have the shift and swing of the discharge of a ductwork in the space like we do with our wall mounts, ASUs. 
where it's blowing straight out and cooling. And if I don't have louvers that I can manually get up there and shift, or I don't want to have to get up there and shift it from summer to winter or winter to summer, right? I have this add-on. It's called an auto louver. And uh, you have the ability now to um, electronically shift the, the swing on that. Uh, you have the ability to fully close, so you're not looking into a black hole up in some of these applications where people, again, it's all about aesthetics. So how do we make it look even better? Well, maybe the auto louver is something we can use. My apologies. Uh, with the ARUs, the, the small ones, 9, 12, and 18s, we have the ability to roll it. It usually is a horizontal, and we can make it a 90-degree turn and turn it straight up. It does have an L-shaped pan, so condensate now will be a gravity flow, as opposed to utilizing the built-in condensate pump. Uh, the cabinets, they do change. Uh, they have some common sizes, but the 7912, I said seven, yeah, we do offer a 7,000. That is for a multiple approach. We don't have a seven single. The nine is the smallest in single. So the cabinet does not change for the 7912. The 18 grows a little bit bigger because of the coil. The 24 then grows a little bit bigger because of the, the larger surface area needed for the bigger BTUs. The height, let me see if I can get this thing working here. So up here, um, I'm sorry, this point here, the height, if you can see my arrow on the screen, that does not change dimension and the front to back does not change dimension. That will always stand the same throughout all these sizes. It's this dimension across, left to right. That's the growing of the, so, um, the uh, surface area on the coil. And that's what needs to get more PTUs out. So that's the only dimension that really changes when we start talking about what size is this, what size is that. RGLX, this is the mid-static, a nine, I'm sorry, a 12,000 out to 48,000. The two larger uh, 42 offering, the 48 offering is a double stack outdoor unit. And these are single systems only. Single systems only, mid static. We went from 0.36 up to now a 0.80. So this was that real first approach of Fujitsu coming in and thinking like, guys, you have drops all over. You have ductwork, you have registers everywhere. We're not just adding a unit per room and having more efficiencies and, you know, flexibility and temperature we now you know we'll have to assimilate to north america and this was that first approach of getting a more static blower in the homes and residents of north american consumers so um bigger units you know outdoor units are pretty small until you get to the two larger bq capacities but a good sear here um and these are heat pumps again so going in and maybe swapping out that unique takeoff making a transition, maybe if the existing ductwork was still, um, you know, viable, it wasn't anything that was bad about it, and we can work with it. So now we just have to transition off the front of this, and then the return, obviously. It's a unique kind of size, so nothing unusual. And you can see how from left to right, the one ton after the four ton, again, single zone systems only. Uh, static pressure on the smaller ones, 0.12 to 0 0.80, up until about the 30,000 and the 36,000 to 48,000, we drop down to a 0.72 static. So it doesn't go 8.0 all the way throughout the line. We have to be aware, again, of our challenges. Model to model, we never want a cookie cut Fujitsu. If we're, if we're sitting on the 48 because of a capacity, then we better dip into uh, more of what are the specs on this? What are the changes? Never underestimate that there's a change. Fujitsu never has a cookie cut approach to any of their equipment. Compact cassettes have changed a little bit. Uh, the cover now is more um, streamlined. It does fit within the grid of a drop ceiling, the two by two square. Uh, in the previous life, they had an overlap about an inch and five eighths square around. So, you know, it might have hindered like a light panel or changing of a, a light, uh, light bulbs later down the road. They have to remove the grid from the front of the unit, then do the light and put it back in reverse. So they re-engineered this. It's a nice, clean looking unit, but um, the 912 and 18 compact cassette. You need access. If you're a salesman talking to this in a residential home, you always need to have access above. This can't be in a living room with a bedroom above. 
unless you're going to put an access panel in their ceiling in their living room and they're okay with that really nothing you can get from below um, to get to the mechanics of this the the circuit board the control wire the power wire the um, line set connections or even the uh, condensate pump these do have condensate pumps they're inches of lift uh, from the pan itself it's about 31 inches and about 28 inches from the discharge so it just allows us to get some elevation and gravity out this is the newer rglx large cassette it's a 360 degree throw they redesigned the 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 grill on this they're now offering another color black because of some of the commercial spaces are just basically painting ceilings now white or black you know uh, restaurants um going out to uh you know a club or something they usually just black out the whole ceiling you don't see anything when you look up and then you know with our traditional covers you'd have these white grills you know throughout the space so you have the option with any of our cassettes the mini the compact or the large the grill is sold separately okay Remember that the grill is a separate line item when you're doing a cassette. There's a new look of the controller, like we saw with the 30 backlit touch screen. It does show you the room temperature as well. Nice performer here, 18,000 out to 48, four ton. Double stack again, same platform as we saw with the mini, uh, with the uh, mid uh, static ducted. So very similar in that approach up to 98 foot rise from flare connection of the outdoor unit i can go as high as almost 10 stories 10 foot per story 98 feet flare to flare the 18 and 36 they have a 164 foot line set distance and the 42 and the 48 goes upwards of 246 feet again derating the higher you go the longer you go you're not now delivering the total BTU capacity that outdoor unit can deliver. We have loss. We have loss with distance and height. When we get into the multi-zone, anything with the outdoor unit, when you see an outdoor unit, AOU, whatever model, with the letter Z, the Z represents zoning, more than one. We have options to pick and choose from indoor types. Again, wall mount, ducted, compact cassette, and, and the floor mount, AGU, all right? What we do with the outdoor unit now is that we have to confirm that our capacities will work with our selection. And that's one of the challenges that we've always seen. The Infinite Comfort Pro app will do this for us as we're building the system. As you're building in the app and confirming estimated distance of line set, 10 feet, estimated distance for, for unit A, for unit B, 30 feet. And then it, it, it then only shows you what outdoor unit you can choose, what you can pick. It, it, you build the indoor units and then it tells you what you can use as an outdoor unit. So it's belts and suspenders in this digital catalog format, Infinite Comfort Pro app, all right? Up, to two, up from two to five indoor units. You never do an outdoor model AOU with the letter Z in it and only connect one unit to it. It will not work. Only two units, always two. You must always have at least two connected uh, outdoor, out, outdoor unit connections when doing multiples, never singles. Okay, not doing one now, one later. That's not going to work. You're not going to have functionality of that one. You must have two. It's a minimum capacity BTU, right? Connection. We say we're at 80 to 130 percent. We have the connectability of 80 percent capacity of the outdoor unit and as high as 130 percent connectability of that outdoor unit. A 48 is a 48. A, a 36 is a 36,000. That's all it can do. How do we have higher connectability capacity on something that's 36,000 BTUs? Inverted technology is this floating variable um, distribution refrigerant. Where is the load the greatest in the space? You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The east side of the building in, in a hot summer day is seeing the load before the west side of the building is. So the load is greater here. You know, the challenges are greater here. So I'm going to deliver the more refrigerant and just trickle charge the other side of the building and maintain. So as the sun shifts or load shifts in the building, so does the refrigerant delivery. So 
it's just the process of understanding how the machine works. Um, pay attention to details. It will help you along the way greatly. These are some of the pages that we've always needed. I need the catalog. I need the catalog. Why? You know, it shows my combinations. Very true. It does. Uh, installation instructions do also. Design and technical manuals do also. And now the Infinite Comfort Pro app does also. Um, when picking an outdoor unit, 18, 24, 36, 36H, or the 45, um, we are fixed with the combination. So if we did an AOU 18, um, let me see if I can get this thing to work again. Right, so if we pick an, uh, an AOU 18 RLXFZH, this up here, these four different styles is our shopping cart. You just don't randomly pick any indoor unit from any part of the catalog. You're in the green section now of the catalog, and this is your shopping cart. You want to do wall mounts? Well, these are the ones you could pick. This is an older catalog, so don't get uh, confused by what you're reading here. This is our ducted. I can have a combination of any one of these four, the styles. What down here shows me exactly what combinations I'm allowed with that AOU 18Z, right? I don't see a 715 here, do you? I don't see a 915 here. So there are no 15s on an AO18. If you should need, because again, I walked the space, I did a load calculation, that 24 now, that's where I can do a 715 or a 9 or even a 1215. Okay, so please pay attention as to you're making the call, right? You're making the call as to what the space requires. If you're doing a program, a heat loss, a heat gain, or a, or a heat loss program, well then, you know, again, don't get locked into the number in the model number also. A 12 can act like a 15. A nine can act like a 12, meaning BTUs. The number is a model number, not a BTU capacity, all right? So we could be actually, installing smaller systems probably more efficient running systems and more comfort delivered because i'm not short cycling you know as the number gets bigger so does the indoor physical size and sometimes aesthetics now um kind of takes over you know wow i didn't realize how big it was i wish i saw it before so if we can keep things smaller it makes life a lot easier too so just pay attention to details, uh, not necessarily the catalog, design a technical manual, I'll show you a slide for that. But this is where you'll find exactly where you can install without being the warranty. So you don't become the warranty, pay attention to these colored blocks. Pay attention to these asterisks here, the little notes. The smallest things on the page are the most important information. It's like an oxymoron. Yeah, look for the smallest thing and you'll learn a lot. Oh, okay. So read the details at the bottom of the page read the fine print notes arrows number one number two number three sometimes asterisks you know i wish they just made a page of all the important stuff i need to know so it tells you the 1818 combo for an outdoor 36 standard not an h you need this optional kit you need option okay sounds again maybe a little lost in translation k9 fz 1818 it's a fitting kit it allows me to hook up just the two 18s to that outdoor 36. Colored blocks again, hitting it off with the dual unit, the AOU 18. Go around the horn here. Anything you see, we have the ability now to install um, based off of the colored blocks with our combinations. Here's our 24. This is a two or three. It just has three ports. The 18 only has two. You have to hook up two. You can't do one. Here, I can do two or three. Have to start with two. You can't just do one. 36, two to four. There's only one dual combination on the standard FZ1. That's an 1818. If you need something more than an 1818, like a 2412 or a 249 or whatever it may be, you might have to jump up to the higher H, the 36H. What I might suggest is, Compare prices of a 36H versus a 45. It might just be, the 45 might just be a couple of bucks more and now it allows you for maybe more future installs. Um, sometimes I like redundancy, depending on the layout of the building. 
you tell me how the outdoor units here, one unit's right above, let's say inside the living room, and the other unit's going up in the attic, across and down to a bedroom, let's say. You know, I might opt to offer two outdoor units, have redundancy. Instead of having a 45 and five heads all out throughout the house, I might do a 24 on this side and maybe a 24 on that side, or, you know, you can split it up. I like having backup redundancy, you know, especially if we're in that conversation about primary heat. If we're offering that H, right, the H model, the minus 15, people are so, you know, wowed by this capability. But um, now if the outdoor unit goes down, you have no heat. And if you did redundancy, maybe two outdoor units, well, now at least we have 60% load running in the house and not zero. Okay, so just depending on what your clientele, depending on what your position is, your strengths, your confidence, your level of what the Fujitsu requirements are, this all comes in time. So uh, the AOU 45, great piece of equipment here, up to five indoor heads, a lot of choices here. Devil in the details, what capacity has to be connected to the A port, the B port. There's a derating of size from large to small. Our largest capacities have to be on the A and B. And as we go to the C and D and E, we can do 12s and 9s and 7s. So it's like a Christmas tree approach almost. All right. Where do we find capacity, combination, BTUs, all the stuff I need to know? Catalog, Infinite Comfort Pro app, all good resources. So looking at these quick little snapshots, AOU, OU, outdoor unit, 18, two-headed monster. You see a connectable indoor unit number must be two, not one or two, it's two. 24, two or three, three or four for the 36. They don't show you the 18-18 combo here. They changed it. They used to say two, three, or four, and then the next catalog comes out, and then they took the two away, but it's still available. The 45. Um, we can do two to five heads there again. But right there, contractor tools, register on the FujitsuGeneral.com. The toolbox, the contractor toolbox, that's where you get to the portal. The amount of information, if you've never seen or you can tap into, or, hey, I just can't remember this, but I know where to find it, that's called the portal on the FujitsuGeneral.com webpage, which I will take you to shortly. All right, anything with the letter H? Some of our manufacturers have their own little tagline. We call ours extra low temperature heating. Extra low temperature heating, meaning the letter H minus 15 heat pump. Everything about that outdoor unit now is unique because of the uh, challenges with that cold, cold temperatures. It's all metal, there's no plastic. The wires, the thermistors, we give you a base pan heater. <clears throat> In your position as a sales, whether you're an installer or someone who's selling equipment, no pads, no pads for Fujitsu, okay? Unless you're selling in Georgia or installing in Georgia, no pads, because these are heat pumps and they need to get off the ground, air to air uh, heat pump. Airflow is key. These things are on the ground and now we have a lack of flow because of flooding, right? Water area floods and then also uh, snow loads. But the base pan is all about making sure we drain away in the dead of night, on the 14 degree night, and we have a defrost cycle going on. The condensation that now is dripping off the outdoor coil is basically less than an inch clearance to that pad. And as I'm trying to leave the base pan here, and I'm dripping and I'm freezing and I'm building, and now I'm actually coming back up into the cabinet, and I have this moving thing called a propeller against something hard called ice. And now we start breaking down. And it's not just a lack of heat. It's now, you know, a, a worse, uh, worst case scenario that I want to be involved with in the dead of a winter, especially if it's 14 degrees out. So get them off the ground, at least the two to three inches for drainage. If you want to use a pad, that's fine. But use some kind of building blocks, elevate the outdoor unit. I still might have some issues depending on where you live and how much snow load you can get or drifting you can get or snow plows pushing the parking lot up against the building and there's your your fujitsu and it's encased in a you know a bank of snow you got to get these things off the ground they're heat pumps they need air and they need drainage all right 
So everything about it's equipped with thermistors and wire parts that can operate without problem, even in low ambient. The, the structure, the physical, no plastic, all metal reinforced, larger cabinets, base pan heaters, um, wires, all the components are, are engineered to be in that low, low extreme cold. This is the first look of a design and technical manual, not the, what we see in the catalog. ASU9RLS3YH. Okay. This is the what was once the LZs now. The LZs is going to replace this RLS3YYH. I told you that the catalog shows you AHRI 47 outdoor temperature, 47 degrees, maintaining 70 indoor temperature. So there is 22,000 BTUs. This is a heat capacity chart. A nine on a 47 degree day produces 22,000 BTUs. Sounds impressive. I've also told you this has the letter H, which is a minus 15 heat pump. The catalog doesn't show anything other than that 22,000 BTUs. It actually, I think it shows you minimum 3,100 to 22,000 BTUs. That's all it states. Doesn't say anything about 47, doesn't say anything about less than 25 feet of line set, doesn't say anything about the two units being tested at equal uh, elevation. Not reality, right? But look at, a, a, let's say for what we want in our world, let's say a 14 degree day. This is a model nine. 14 degree day, 23 degree day. Let's go over to maintaining 70 indoor. 70 indoor, 14 degree days. This nine is still producing 16,000 BTUs. So why do we have to install a 15 on a design day of 14 in someone's home? You know, even we went bigger. Oh, you know, I'm not really sure about the 15. I'm going to install an 18 because, you know, that number is closer to 18 than it is 15. You know, like the mind starts playing tricks on us to prepare for the worst unless we know the true documentation. So let's go a little further. Let's go down to a minus five, not an H, a standard. Maintaining 70 indoor, this nine still produces 14,000 BTUs. And let the cat out of the bag. Here's your minus 15 maintaining 70 it's still above the rate plate of nine eleven thousand one hundred btus we have to start tapping into the correct resources not what is limited for publication okay you need to see the differences between the holy grail of needing that fujitsu catalog it's smoke and mirrors at best it's limited and it's really geared for homeowners this is a chart showing us against by others who have similar capacities. We are second to none in output. We are smoking the competition with our BTU outputs across our nine, our 12, and our 15. So if you get into a locking horn conversation with a homeowner and they're insisting you want by others, you say, listen, I can do whatever you like me to do. I have access to that. But if this is my house, this is what I would install. And these are the reasons why. And you can prove it very easily. Sear ratings and BTU output. So if you're really challenged and you're thinking primary heat source, and I just need all that minus 15, um, you know, capability, and I'm up against somebody very similar that only delivers maybe, you know, 6,000 BTUs when I can deliver 11,000 BTUs. Sounds like a win in our in our camp, not theirs. So understand it, spin it, use it, and make some money. All right. This is anything that has the letter H currently, right? From small, 9, 12, 15, 18, 24, 30s. We do offer it with our AGUs, our floor mount. And then we go into the multiples, the outdoor units, the AOUs with the letter H. The 18, 24, 36, not the 45. No 45H. All right. We do have some energy stars. If you're if you're concerned or someone just wants it, then we do offer some singles, um, 182430 and the 2036H, uh, the multiple outdoor energy star minus 15H. Uh, great commercial application. I'm not going to kill this. I think I kind of already re recovered this, uh, but it does minus five cooling, minus 15. And we do have a function code lockout. Definitely, it's a critical cooling. I never want heating. I can lock out heating, you know. Accessories where we make more money. If you're not aware, our standard controllers, anytime you see that group control here, 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 
you can daisy chain up to 16 indoor units off of one controller. So think about the lack or less labor, right? So labor is a cost. I can reduce labor. If, if it's an application that allows like a catering hall, maybe, maybe I want to split the hall into two sections. I have eight indoor units. I'll do four over here acting as one zone because there's a divider wall, it'll never be anything less, it could be more. They open up the wall and then I have the other four over there. So I can make it all one zone or I can make it two. Instead of having eight individual thermostat or remote controls, I can just use two, one on that side, one on this side, and daisy chain with standard thermostat wire, the four heads on one side and the four heads on the other side. So it's just this ever, you know, ever evolving, um, changes or this is nothing new but just options for us to apply in the field again a lot of different remote controls this is a new module this is where we're going to go with our new modules from intesis homes they call it ac cloud controller it's an interface the newer rg alexas of the world you heard me say that earlier they have this uart port it's a un65 it's waiting for you to plug this thing in that's the ease of now hooking up these new modules. The newer RGLXs of the world has a UART port CN65, and now we're, we're able to incorporate Wi-Fi very simple. We're getting into Modbus for larger residents or light commercial, doing a BACnet or a Modbus. We have that now available. Accessories, accessories, accessories. Again, it's in the back of the catalog in the arm section. If you're aware with third-party Wi-Fi uh, thermostats, can we do Fujitsu? The answer is yes, but you give up something. You give up pretty much all the uh, efficiencies of Fujitsu. Instead of having this live variable speed uh, functionality, it turns it into an on-off, zero off, on at 100. This uh, UTY TTRX is an add-on. You must give it a power supply. Uh, you can do one Nest, Echo B, whatever your choice of third party, up to, again, group controls, 16 indoor heads. But um, you do give up a lot of the beauty of modulation. Um, air baffles, wind baffles. Again, uh, not an everyday application, but maybe it's specified. Maybe it's just in an area, or an airport, open fields, wherever it may be and wind gusts are a problem with the back spinning of our motor and we can't overcome the inertia of when the wind is blowing. So we have wind baffles. It's nothing new per se. It's just new to Fujitsu in the, an offering in their lineup. So be aware of that. And of course, why? Efficiency, efficiency, comfort, what we do electrically in people's homes, reducing the energy bills, uh, year round comfort, zoning functionality, you know, <clears throat> there is no season. Please be aware, I'm going to say this, that our, our heat pumps do both heating and cooling. They just don't do it simultaneously. They do cooling really well, and they do heating really well, really well. So if you're in this scenario where I got an outdoor unit with four indoor heads, and someone wants heating and someone wants cooling, the outdoor unit doesn't know what you want. It can't do both, so it doesn't do anything. So just know functionality sometimes with doing multi-zones what that means to the occupant. You got to educate them a little bit more. What does it look like on the indoor? I don't like this thing up high. Well, I do off the AGU, it's down low, below the uh, rail, the chair rail. If you want, I can go up in your attic. I can do a ducted one. So you have a lot of choices. Very quiet, very quiet, both indoor and outdoor. All right, very quiet indeed. Until we shorten our line set and then the compressor starts growling at us because of refrigerant. All right, applications, you're only limited by your creativity and proper selection of a piece of equipment when it comes to Fujitsu. All right, it's not the years of old where it's just for a, a four seasons room, you know, or a, hey, uh, this room just has an issue with heating. Can we throw one of these in there? This is now mainstream, everyday, live applications. Commercial, very much commercial, very much commercial, residential all day long installation outdoor unit right what does this mean you can show them pictures in the catalog we have a pair of insulated line sets from outdoor to indoor we apply power depending on the outdoor unit's requirements um you know where we live we don't want to put it on the pad like you see in the picture there connecting indoor to outdoor one power source 
that's nice. And that goes to our multi-position air handler, where typically uh, an air handler has its own power source. With our Fujitsu offering, we do outdoor power and we power indoor from the outdoor unit itself. Line sets, let's get into a little bit more of that. Clearances, clearances, airflow, airflow, right? Every model, how many outdoor units you have lined up next to each other too, can change clearances. For the most part, get them off the ground, get them off a pad. I seen guys, well, I elevated it. Yeah, you put the riser and then you still put the pad underneath the Fujitsu. So, you know, it's kind of um, defeating the purpose of drainage. You know, there's very little clearance there at that leg, at the leg at the bottom of the Fujitsu. Right there, it's less than an inch. If the pad was the, uh, the arrow going across here, it's less than an inch where those drain holes are and your potential for building up ice. Not a good day. You better have a snow shovel in your truck because now you've got a no heat call. Get them off the ground. Better is better. Better performance, lack of complaint, happier customers. Very creative. You see the pad with the risers, not the risers with the pad. Again, I don't like wall mounts, they're vibrating. We have freestanding options. We have a lot of options, All right? We talked about the minimum already. One way, flare to flare. You must understand the units being installed, requirements when you're placing it or having a discussion with the homeowner that this is the outdoor unit, um, this is as far as I can go. No, I want it over here. I'm like, well, you might be in a position that you're gonna walk away. Don't install a plagued problem knowing from, from day one. It's not going to be a good scenario for the life of that unit. Understand there's a maximum and there is an elevation height difference too. All right, and that's just for singles. It gets a little funkier when you do a multiple. Because remember what I was saying before, I can tell you, oh, the minimum is 10. Well, over here, it changes. What is it now? Never cookie cut Fujitsu and their line sets. Pay attention to details. Plenty of information is provided to you. I don't care if it's from the catalog, the app, the installation structure manuals, the d &T manuals, it's everywhere. But we now have to measure A port to A unit, B port to B unit, and so on and so forth. This is a chart right out of the installation guide. With all things connected, if we maxed out the four units, I have upwards of 230 feet. No indoor unit could be further than 82 feet one way. Max height difference between outdoor and the furthest indoor, 49 feet. Oh, and by the way, I have units going up and units going down in the building. What are the differences between the indoor units themselves? That's 33 feet for this unit. They must have all things connected, uh, each unit at least 16 foot. So the 10 went to 16 as soon as we jumped up into a multi-zone. And then the minimum for the system now, what if I only did the, uh, three heads? Well, three times 16 is not 66 feet. The system requirement, the compressor, it's, it lives in a happy spot if I hook up at least 66 feet minimum to the system. That's what these charts are helping us determine. We do offer Wi-Fi, everything we offer, whether it's built in, add-on, we have 100% lineup for Wi-Fi. Everything we offer in Fujitsu Halcyon can be Wi-Fi. This is a look of this first generation. We did the third party and thesis homes, two different options there. One was built as you were uh, installed as you were building the system. One was a, a true uh, find a power source add-on. And then the ones to the left, the RLS 3YYHs, that was built in Wi-Fi, like the LZs of today. And then we also had the interface add-on um, as a Wi-Fi to most of our Fujitsus. Voice command, voice command, options, options all around us with Fujitsu. Really good lineup here, very flexible, be creative, play within the rules, and we won't get burnt. Any questions, Rob? No, sir. Uh, pretty much answered everything as it came in. Uh, so we're, we're looking all good on questions in case, every, uh, in, in case anybody has any uh, questions right now. Uh, feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll answer them as they come. Awesome. I'm going to try and shift gears, hopefully with a little success here. And I'm going to bring you to the, let's see if I can do this. Where do I want to go? That's not it. Bear with me one second. I think I want to close this.
Okay. Rob, tell me if you've seen the Fujitsu website or what you see. Yep, we're all good here. All right. So let me just move some things around, make it a little cleaner for me to see. <clears throat> this is the fun stuff of webinars, all the stuff in front of the screens that you guys hopefully don't see. You should be seeing the Fujitsu General website. Um, this is everybody has access to this, including homeowners. And I always kind of want to um, drive you guys here to see the information they have access to. If you click on this residential tab here, the world of Fujitsu opens up to them to have plenty of questions for you when you're interviewing or being interviewed, so to speak, across the coffee table. And all this stuff about efficiencies, individual zoning, installation, oh, Wi Fi, you know, rebates. You better be prepared for some of the questions they might have for you. And then as we go further down, uh-oh, extra low temperature heating, catalog, download. They can literally download the catalog that you have on your PDF. So there's a lot of information that I just don't get why Fujitsu thinks it's necessary for them to have. But what I want you guys to start tapping into, if I can go back one. No, go back one. Stop sharing. There we go. Go back. Is down here. I mentioned the portal a couple of times. As a sales rep distribution, you have your own. As a contractor, you have your own. And this is a, a you know a lockdown. You have to be registered. So here's my username, my password. I hit login, and now it opens up to a totally different screen on the web page. Your screen does not look as involving as this as I am a rep. So my platform is a lot different. <clears throat> What you want to start tapping into is load calculator, right? And if you wanted to do a quick load calculation, they give you one on the portal. And if you want to start plopping in, you know, some information about where you are, it's pretty impressive. You can do it on site. It doesn't take long. So if we go into New York, we go into an area, let's call it Central Islip. Okay, that's fine. We have a room, and I'm going to do a couple of quick numbers here. Let's say it's uh, 20 by 15. And we have maybe a 10 foot ceiling in this room. Oops. Some of these things you have to back up. Construction type, we'll call it residential. You go and build your exterior walls. One of them is 20 and the height is 10, right? We have an exposed wall, yes. And we have a sunny window. Let's say we have 20 to 20 square feet window, whatever, five by four window. So we say 20. And an insulation type, light, medium, or heavy, you know, new house, old construction, whatever. Let's go with a medium load. And then we can do the second outdoor uh, wall. <clears throat> that was our 15. We know that to be true. We have a 10 foot and it is exposed. And we have another sunny window, maybe um, six by five or something, 30. And then also the same type of insulation, medium. I can calculate down here what's above, what's below. Condition space above. Let's say yes, I have a condition space above. And um, we don't have any condition space below, so no. How many people do we have? Well, it could be a family room or whatever the case may be. Let's say just two people for this case. Do we have any additional office equipment? Now, this is kind of funny. You start looking at some of the off VCRs. I thought this was hysterical. Fax machines, you know? all these different types of printers in the office. So we don't have anything there. Appliances, we don't have anything there. These little helpful drop downs over here is like, what do they mean by light wattage, right? Light wattage, what does that mean? Well, if you wanted to, you can click on the help button and it brings up um, telling you exactly what this means. Input of any additional equipment, right? Heat gain, miscellaneous loads and BTUs located in the space. For example, you may wish to include BTRs, stereo systems, you know, needed listing, you know, like, so all these things add an additional load. You can do something that way, all right? So we'll just leave it as 0.5. Uh, infiltration, uh, we can pick, let's say it's a medium. And what do we want for the room temperature? And it gives us a choice here. And you say, all right, I want 70 degrees. And then over here, hit the calculate button. And it'll spit out, do you want uh, for your summer load? It says 5,700. And it says for your winter load, 6,600. So um, now you have the ability to go and search or you know, co co um, correctively pick a proper piece of equipment. 
I want to change something really quick. I did an example. Let's hit LaGuardia. Let's just change the location. Let's go a little further west. Hit calculation, 64, 78. So you understand when you're changing your location, it changes what your loads are, elevation, difference in uh, area, you know. But here it shows you AOU nines. It gives you some choices. So let's say I have this choice. I'm going to do the R, um, RLS2 or the RLS3 or just a standard nine wall. If I go back now, I want to show you this. This is where I want you guys to get. At the end of the day, this is the Carrot, the Infinite Comfort Pro app. It's a great resource. It only is two tabs. It's project and it's product. It's a digital catalog and settings. Let me open up settings for you guys really quick. You can do your registrations right from here. Imagine your installers on site just to finish the install. They can register their equipment right on site, right from here. You could do uh, torque settings. Again, that's for an installer. Well, let's go back. Let's go to the, oh, sorry, I'm back one too far. My bad. I'll go back to the app here. Let's go back to the products. Let's go to products. Remember, it says a digital catalog. You can go up here. Please wait. Please wait. Okay. So here's a LMAS, the new offering. It tells you nominal cooling, nominal heating, temperature range for heating and cooling, pre-charger length mount, and your minimum and maximum mount length. But it tells you far more. Hit details here. See details. It opens up far more. Gives you your SEER, HSPF, EER, COPs. I'm chasing a rebate. Does this qualify? This helps you right here, one-stop shop. It gives you the things I just said, the minimum, the maximum. Gives you your line set lengths, I mean, uh, sizes. So now you're building a building material. Your pre-charge, their flare connections. If you go above the pre-charge of 49 to say 59, right, max is 66. I have this number right here, additional refrigerant OZ ounce per foot. That you make a note for your installer. Hey, we're going to install this 59 feet. The difference between 59 and 49, the pre-charge is 10. 10 times 0.22, 2.2 ounces. You're driving the bus from start to finish in that role. It gives you your circuit breaker, so you know what you need downstairs. It gives you your, your voltage, 208, 230 volt, single phase. It gives you some physical dimensions. It gives you the ranges on the remote control. The lowest that can provide in cooling is 64. Is that going to be a problem? You know, in your heating ranges in Fahrenheit and Celsius, okay? Warranties, warranties right here. It gives you your AHRI number too if you're filing for a rebate. This is where a lot of people, hey, what's the AHRI number? Use the app, it's right there. What model are you talking about? It also shows you down here accessories. What do I have available to add to this? Upsell, same customer, huge resource in this one platform. Let's go over to this tab now. I want to build a system, all right? Um, build a system. There's a little plus sign over here. Add. Project. If you just want to start dabbling, you need to add one thing. This line right here. What do we call it? Let's call it uh, webinar. 4121. Oh, okay. Hit enter. Hopefully. Hit enter. Notes. You can put whatever you like here. Customer's name. You can put all the information. You can start building the job. Let's create it though. I just want to get going here. How many zones do you want? All right. No, I don't want to edit that. Let's go to create a new system. Select the BTUs, single zone, multi-zone, J series. I'm going to do a multi-zone. Number of zones, we're going to do a three-headed install. Zone one, BTUs. I determined that bedroom was probably a 7,000. What type of unit do you want? Compact, single duct, wall. It tells you exactly what's available in a seven. It doesn't give you the um, AGU, right? There's no AGU. It's either the wall mount, SASU, ARU, ducted, or AUU compact cassette. So I'm going to do a seven wall, and I'm going to estimate the line set. How long is the line set? Let's say it's 10 feet. And what's the root number? 
let's say it's just give it a letter, letter A. Zone two, well, that's going to be a 12. Uh, unit type, let's go with another, oh, we got a floor mount. We'll do a floor mount, line set here. Let's go 30 feet. And then zone, uh, this is going to be B. Continue down. We'll do another 12 for zone three. We'll do another, let's do a wall mount. We'll do a line set of 70, and we'll call this room C. All right. Now it tells you with everything you thought you need, select the outdoor unit. It tells you what you can use. You're not making a mistake here. All right. So it gives you zone one, two, and three, what you inputted. It's giving you an AOU 36Z1. But look at what else it's telling you here. It's giving you its capacity, 86%. And it's also saying no, red. Line set length within range. Line set length of 10 foot is out of range for indoor unit ASU 7 RLF 1. Because remember what I told you, for all multiples, it has to be 16. So it's checking you. It's making problems go away in a handheld app right in front of you. All right. If you wanted the multi zone, now I'm going to offer you the letter H if you wanted to go the hyperheat. But the line set still remains the same. It's a problem. So, what can we do? Can I go back? Results. Let's bring that 10 back up to 16. Make that 16. Select outdoor unit. Same 36. Now the box is green. Huge advance for salespeople walking a job for a installer having access to this PDF of what he's installing. And A could be Becky's room, Bobby's room. You can label it as more detail as you like. Now let's look at this. Save, save system to project. Save system to project. Because if we go down here, there should be a tab telling me, uh, email me. <clears throat> So if I go back to projects, uh, I apologize. I think I yeah, email me, email me. So now I just sent an email to myself as a PDF. This email might be going to the office. Hey, get me a quote. This might be an email going right to your wholesale salesperson. Hey, I need a price on this system. When is it available? You've taken a walkthrough, a design, a checks and balance to a PDF a universal sign-in, let's say, for a company approach, sales, inside, installer, technician, and this document now is live for that customer if there's ever a hiccup, a change in the system, a need to, to uh, go and, and work on the system. So this is a great, great tool here that's just it's manifesting into more and more as I start to see the, uh, the resources here. So again, you know, going over to the settings, I'm an installer. We have set uh, uh, torque values. This is when they're making the fitting ups. Not it's not the sales guy. It, it might be the technician because they had a bad flare. So the in install went in. Maybe something went bad. A couple months later, a technician had to go out there. You told me needed at the initial time because installing 59 feet or whatever the, the line set was, I needed 2.2 additional ounces. He had to drop the whole system, find, fix, repair, clean and then weigh in a new. Well, he thought, you said weigh in, I put back the pre-charge. Well, that was at 49 feet, we're at 59 feet, read the notes, and it tells you you need to weigh in additional 2.2 ounces. So great, great stuff with, um, with this new added uh, app that Fujitsu has for us. Really good stuff. If you don't have this download, please get this today, start playing with it. If you have any questions, then that's what we're here to do is help you guys certainly all day, every day. All right. Rob, you see the, the PowerPoint again? Yes, sir. Okay, good. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so if you have any questions, follow up is after this is over. I mean, we're hitting 944, so I'm a little over, but we're doing well. Um, get to the resources. This is a downloadable, whether you want to do the QR or use the portal. You have my documents. Uh, you have a lot of tech data. You have um, marketing PDFs you can forward to your customers. 
That's the look of what the app is, the Comfort Infinite Comfort Pro app on any of your app stores. Again, really easy. If you want to shoot these QR codes, please be my guest. I'll leave it up here for a second. Now think about what I said. If you have access to this app, so does homeowners. So you got to be prepared for what they know. They're educating themselves. All right, www.infinitecomfortpro.com. That's the app of uh, the uh, website approach. So three tabs, product, projects, and settings. It's very, very simple, and it's packed with so much information to make sure we don't screw up from the initial walkthrough. Again, just quick snapshots. I'm not going to go through this again. Details, details. More information, the better. You're responsible for the line sets. It will tell you whether you're good or bad with your selections. Um, it gives you notifications too, any updates. So really good stuff is a like a, a community board, what's coming new out of Fujitsu. Rob, we're good with questions? Yeah, nothing else coming. Well, if you like, I'm going to give you my cell phone. This is something I do with most of my trainings. Um, I make myself available in evenings or even weekends as long as a number a name comes up on my my phone so if i'm in training class i'm not answering the phone if uh, i'm in the field sometimes i just can't get to it right away but again if i see 10 digits more likely i'm not going to answer versus someone with the name uh, i can text message you during a break hey what's going on everything okay but um i require that you text me your first last name where we met and i have your phone number because you're texting me so you go into my contacts so Anthony Tassi, there's my email, atassi at walesdarby.com. And my cell phone is 631-379-4942. Again, 631-379-4942. Uh, it works only if you text me your first, last name, who you work for, and where we met. And you can say Fujitsu webinar. You can reference April 21 if you want for the year. If there are no more questions, I thank you for your time. I hope you leave with more than you came in to the uh, presentation and um, hope to see you guys soon. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day, guys.